Good morning, everybody. This is uh, the well, music and acoustic engineering master's program and uh, the first class, the inaugural class of computer music representations and modeling, as well as the inaugural class of music and acoustic engineering. So it's uh, wonderful to have you all here. And most of all, it's wonderful to start the year with uh, surrounded by amazing musicians. Uh, I hope most of you were with us last night at the final concert of uh, the Engineering Fest, and uh, it was absolutely, absolutely incredible. So I uh, honestly was having a hard time sleeping after hearing, uh, after 
seeing all of uh, I mean, them in action. We have uh, Alfredo Rodriguez here. So. And Simone Bollini. Many, many reasons to be proud of this event. Uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce Fausto Savateri. So. Uh, the, um, the first thing I'd like to say is that what we're doing here, what's going to happen in this academic year before we plunge into a conversation with uh, Alfredo and with uh, Simone. Um, as you know, we, 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 uh, the music and acoustic engineering is a very unusual program, as you very well know. Uh, it's one of those programs that try to break the ice in a direction that was never taken before. And uh, there are many programs around that do a little bit of uh, music engineering, but only from the standpoint of uh, music information retrieval, software applications, this sort of things. We're trying to do a little more, and we're building uh, experience on, in that direction in a progressive fashion with the help of amazing musicians. And uh, I've had so much help from uh, previous guests, from current guests, and those that have been helping us in building this program are still here collaborating with us. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm mentioning this is because uh, Fausto and Simone have helped a great deal in the past. Fausto has, is also uh, doing a lot to take students to festivals where the students can actually develop applications in live settings. So maybe later Fausto can say something about that. And um, uh, the other uh, wonderful thing is that we can actually learn from musicians how to talk to them and to go beyond just being able to talk to them. So understanding their art, understanding their craft, understanding uh, the tools of the trade so that we, are, we have a little more awareness when it comes to developing application in their help. So I am, I've always been a strong believer in, uh, in uh, getting into music, developing things, helping music, also trying to do music in first person, no matter how badly we do it. Uh, personally, I, 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 I love to play myself. I am terrible at that, but I don't care. And I don't, if I lose face, I think it's important to dirty your hands when it comes to music and try to interact with musicians as far as possible, because that's the only way we have to learn their trade and to do the best we can to help them, support them in their art and in their development. And of course, also supporting the listeners in their ability to understand what musicians are doing. If you do learn how to best listen to something, and you also learn how to develop applications that will take the listeners by hand and uh, along a path of growing. And that's the trick, that's the, the beauty of uh, developing, I mean, of technology. Technology should be aimed on one hand at helping musicians, but most of all, at accompanying listeners into a path of growing. And it starts with us. If we learn how to listen, if we learn how the trade works, then we can also develop things for other people so that they will be better listeners, more involved, and most of all, being emotionally involved in what they hear and what they see and feel you know, in, you know, part of the, of the process, become part of the process. I strongly believe that uh, an engineer shouldn't just be there to plug uh, wires, develop patches or anything like that. Like that. Uh, musician has to feel music much more than the audience and be the first one to understand what's best for the musician and maybe participate. So this is why we have this course. Computer Music Representations and Models is the first course of, its, of, of this kind where we try to understand music in all of its forms, in all of its layers, from the standpoint of the engineer or the mathematician or the signal processing expert, whatever it is. But uh, it starts with the musicians. And this is why it has become now a tradition to start our course talking with some amazing musicians. So this is gonna be exciting because in, uh, in this course, we're gonna have uh, some amazing guests in addition to the guests that are surrounding me right now, we're gonna also have uh, Francois Pachet, 
participate into the course. Professor Pache is the director of Spotify Labs uh, in Paris. And he is also an, an amazing musician. He's a fantastic guitar player. And he's going to be with us for a few months. So um, we're going to probably teach this course also kind of together. There's going to be Dave Schroeder from uh, NYU, uh, New York University in Steinhardt. He's the director of, music pro of uh, the music department at uh, NYU. So he's going to be with us also for a few days in, uh, in early October. So that's going to be fun. Um, around the 19th of October, we're going to have uh, uh, a guest that has been accompanying us for quite a while. Is Yogev Gabay from Israel. is a phenomenal drummer, absolutely phenomenal drummer and educator. He, is, uh, he has been doing a regular workshop in this, in this uh, course. And uh, uh, he will also give a concert on the 19th, a, a workshop concert on the 19th of October, together with Ron Minis, a fantastic piano player, again from Israel. And uh, so there's going to be Ron Minis trio and a workshop on the part, of, on the rhythmic structures, on the part of uh, uh, Yoga of Gabay. More to come, Davide Logiri on the piano, uh, talking about you know, structuring melodies and understanding how building melodies is very similar to building oratorics. So building uh, a speech. And so there's a lot connected to that idea. So uh, let's uh, hold tight. This is gonna be an interesting course. We're all gonna learn from this, starting from me. I'm here to learn as much as you are. So, well, um, first of all, a warm, a warm welcome to our guests here. So. I don't know, honestly, where to start. There is so much to talk about. So the idea for the day, and we talked about it a little bit before, is to have a little bit of a conversation, introducing a little bit of the history of these guests, and uh, maybe a few questions about their trade, how they go about you know, building their art, how they go about improvising, and so on. And then we're going to leave the format open to questions and maybe, you know, ask things and uh, let's use that piano eventually because I don't want to make this all just uh, talk, talk, talk. So uh, I'd like to start with, uh, with Alfredo asking a few questions to you. So let me give you the mic, I can use this one, I believe. Uh. So there is so much to say about Alfredo. I've been uh, obsessively listening to his music for years now. The, uh, the first, the first uh, encounter I had with, with his art was actually kind of funny. It was uh, about challenges. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, starting with challenges uh, over the internet, and they were plain uh, little melodic patterns, and people had to build on top of it uh, interesting things. But before we get there, because I want to ask you some questions about that, I wanted to ask you about your, your, your background. Honestly, I have a, a, a strong emotional tie to Cuba, and that's where you come from. I, um, I spent uh, two weeks in Cuba in 2001. Yeah, in, uh, in Havana? Yes, in La Havana. And there was a conference, uh, the computer music conference organized uh, by the university. Okay. And uh, it was just the most amazing thing. Amazing. The, the, uh, the first thing that struck me was the pervasive presence of art and performance everywhere. Everybody was absolutely possessed by the devil when it came to playing piano, when it came to playing musical instruments, and so on and so on. I know you were at the uh, conservatory, and then, uh, so initially you were at the Conservatorio Amedeo Roldan, and then you moved to the Instituto Superior de Arte. So how was your experience uh, growing there, doing, uh, doing Well, I, I actually grew up in a very musical family. My dad, since he was a kid, he was a, a singer and musician. So I grew up listening to a lot of music and also going, I remember, you know, like three or four years going to the rehearsals yeah. where he had great musicians also, uh, you know, part of the band. So I, uh, to be honest, at, at the beginning, I wanted to be a drummer, not a pianist. <laughs> really? That was what I wanted. And, and in Cuba, we have, you know, the classical school of music is starting at, at seven six, seven years old, but if you go at that age, you have to choose between piano or violin. Mm -hmm. 
Uh-huh. If you want to be a drummer or any other instrument, in, um, any if you want to choose any other instrument, you have to go at 10 years old. Okay. So since they brought me at six, I just said, you know, I'm just going to choose the piano. And then I'm going to change when I'm 10 to drums or something like that. Yeah. But that didn't happen anymore because I <laughs> fell in love with the, with the piano. I didn't want to change anymore when I was 10. So that was a little bit of how I started in the, actually in the classical school of music. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you are related a little bit with the school situation in Cuba, but the only schools that we have when it comes to music is the classical school yeah. of music. Yeah. We actually still today, we don't have a jazz cathedral. We don't have, we just, we don't have like a Cuban school of music or anything now, like that. I fall that. off the chair just when you classical say music. because that's, I mean, that, that's the cradle of uh, Afro-Cuban tradition, obviously, but also jazz, Af- jazz Cuban uh, tradition. So, how do you form yourself in a situation like that? You're well, just exposed to... To be, to be honest, I feel, well, it has to be something related to tradition because there's there have been so many years Cuban, Cuban musicians involved with American music. So when it comes to jazz, for example, um, a lot of my father, my grandfather always tells me stories about, you know, before revolution came into Cuba in 59, they had a big... Um, all the time, like American musicians were coming to Cuba since we are very close. We are only 90 miles from Cuba to the States. Yes. So we are so close to each other. And music, musically was like that too. A lot of people from the States coming to Cuba to play Cuban music, to learn Cuban music and to, you know, and to bring their music jazz to our country as well. Mm-hmm. That happened also with musicians from Cuba coming to New York. And that's why, you know, like you see people like Channel Pulse playing with DC Lesbie long time ago. Mm-hmm. And that's been happening for so many years. I have recordings of Nat King Cole in Havana, Lionel Hatton in Havana. Yeah. Even like Quincy, my mentor, who has been for more than 10 years, he went twice to Havana before revolution. Wow. So yeah. just to bring big bands and all of that. Of course. So again, you know, we I, I, I come from a country that we have a big tradition of popular music as well. And then what they decided to do with the schools was just teach classical music. And then I think, you know, it has been like a mix between a lot of cultures. And that's why I guess today we have like a very unique and powerful culture that is a, actually a, a mix of a lot of things. But obviously, you know, American music, European music, and also African music. Absolutely. Because we had the slaves in Cuba a long time ago, and yes. then they brought their culture to our country. Yes. And the mix of all of that, you know, we were, you know, lucky in a way because Absolutely. we had a lot of different cultures in our country and we create something Creole, you know, like something. So while during the day you were playing Rachmaninoff or whatever, the, the, you were at being the beginning, drilled on. At the beginning, I had like a, like a big contrast because it was like going to a school in the well, actually, at the, not at the beginning. At the beginning, I just played classical music. Right, I was right. seven years old, and I was just playing classical music. But when I was ten, eleven years old, I started to be more curious about the popular music of my country. Even though that was in my blood, because that is in your blood. You hear to Cuba, yeah. you know, in oh, Cuba, yeah. it's, it's it's crazy. But everyone has something related to music. Everyone knows how to dance. Everyone knows how to sing and to play. You don't have to go to school to play. Yeah. I have friends that they are amazing musicians they, and they haven't developed it. It's just like they have music in their blood, yeah. but they haven't studied any instruments or whatever, but I feel it. And I go, well, wow, you're so musical. Even like how the way you talk, you know, you're yes, already indeed. like making rhythms very interesting. Yeah. So what I'm saying at the end is like, you know, I grew up, I had the, the two schools because I went, I had the, the opportunity to go to the classical school of music in the mornings and then I had my, my dad, which was a musician that didn't go to school. And you were sneaking out in the evening and playing with him, right? In of course. The, yeah. So that was, that was what I was going to say, actually. So I had that two schools in my, in, in, you know, since I was, at the same since time, I was yeah. a kid at the same time, which actually it was for me very hopeful. Uh, but at the same time, the, uh, the, uh, the way that they approach music was so different. Because when you come from music from the streets, the approach is completely different than you come from music from the school. Uh, so for me, it was very helpful. Today, I see it, and I was like, wow, I was very fortunate to have different opinions of people, you know. And 
I think that made me a very flexible person, not did only you, about music, but did, about did life. Did you have her perform on the streets yourself? Yes, did yes, you? I did. Because this is very interesting because I, I had a long conversation with uh, Francois Pache. I was mentioning him before. Okay. And uh, he said that if you really want to understand how to engage the audience, you mm. really have to play on the street. And he actually mm. took the exam to be able to play in the metro in Paris. So it was a very difficult exam. You had to take it at the Conservatoire de Paris. Of and, course. Uh, so you had to pass the exam. And then he was scared to death in the metro trying to play something on the guitar. And he's a, well, he's a worldwide famous researcher. But he was there in the metro of Paris with his own guitar trying to figure out how the heck am I going <laughs> to uh, engage people that are not interested in you, they're just passing by, and you want them to stop and listen to your music. I mean, that, that's... Well, a good, was that something that you, you tried yourself? Mis- no, I, ha- I didn't try like that, to be honest. Uh, but um, I've seen a lot of experiments like that today. Um, I mean, what I can say is that I play music to live, to be honest. You know, this is something that I do as a necessity. And I... When it comes to audience, it's a very tricky question because I think... Um, you have to be happy with yourself also first in order to express something to someone. You know, it's difficult to connect with someone if you don't feel, if you don't feel the connection with yourself also first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my humble opinion. Yeah. Um, so I feel that you can try many things always, obviously to engage with audience and, and to engage with other people because there are many tricks. But also, it has to come something from you naturally, I think, also, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Music, I think, or anything in life, I think is meant to, you know, to make you happy. Anything that you do, it has to be something that makes you feel alive every day and a reason that you feel like, okay, you know, I, sh- I should keep developing something like this because it makes me, you know, like to happy to wake up every day. It, it transpires in your music. You have... Everything is in uh, either uh, Ionian scale or Lydian scale. It's all very, very bright what you play. And uh, really, the happiness comes uh, through your finger and uh, <laughs> to the audience, and the engagement is there. So it's instantaneous. So. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's a good question for, for the audience, actually. You know, some people. No, well, I, I was part of the <laughs> audience, so I can tell you that. But then I'm sure everybody was, uh, is in agreement with me on, uh, on this. It's just an amazing experience to be involved well, in your thank music. You. So. I think, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's very important also for us as a musician, and this is the way that I see it, that the audience is so important for us, for me at least. You know, I feel that I'm having. You know, even though we are the protagonists in a way because we are on the stage and they are not, I feel also I feel anything that is happening there. And sometimes, to be honest, I even tra- I even um, transport myself when I'm playing and try to try to think as as if I'm part of the audience too. Sometimes yeah. I do that. Sometimes, even though I'm playing, I'm like, why I would have been feeling if I am outside and not here right now. Yeah, so yeah. it's like like games that I always I it always do. It's embodied experience. So you, huh? you imagine yourself. Yes, in the yes. Even though I cannot do it, I try to imagine anything while I'm playing the piano. Yeah. Even though there are so many things that I cannot actually try as a human being, but why not? You know, imagination yeah. is endless. So I try to experiment and, and play with those games too. So yeah. how, how how do you? coordinate with, uh, with uh, in this case it was uh, M- Michelle Oliveira and uh, Yarel Hernandez, uh, incredible musicians uh, on stage. And uh, yeah. uh, because you must have a relationship with them that allows you to also channel your enthusiasm mm. through them and let them channel their enthusiasm through you. So what kind of communication do we establish and how, how does this communication refer to the audience? Well, we all, we've all experienced that yesterday, but uh, it, yeah, is that I th- I intentional? Think is that, you know, comes just by itself? And... I think it's a mix, mix of a lot of things, but I, you know, when you're playing, if I play the piano solo, it's just a conversation with myself. But when you're playing with someone else, even if it's a duo or a symphony, there are many other minds involved already. So you have to be also, um, like for example, what we what we do as a trio, 
um, we, we have a message that we want to express, even though it has a lot, you know, involving improvisation. Improvisation is something that you actually kind of create at the moment. You know, it's, it has to, you know, you, you have to know with who you're playing and also when, it, when you want to create a project. If you want to just improvise, that's not a problem. We can improvise you and I. We don't know each other. We just try. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, but that's not, but that doesn't mean that we can connect. Exactly. We can improvise, all of us. Of course. Anyone. And something can happen. It's like relationships. Level, right? you, you meet a person and sometimes you like them, sometimes you don't like them. Mm -hmm. So if you like them, you try to develop that usually. <laughs> yeah. It could be that the situation that you don't like them and you try to develop that too. It happens too. The human beings, we are so fascinated. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, mostly, if you like someone, is when you try to keep, you know, engage. You yes, know, engage with them. So that happens the same with music. Sometimes you play with a musician that you connect and you have chemistry and you want to keep developing that. And that's what happened with me and Michael, for example. We grew up together in Cuba. We've been playing more than 20 years together because we grew up in Cuba. And I, I, I've been playing with him and we know each other so good and, and he knows what I really want to express with music, and I, I know where he wants to go as well. So it's important to try to surround yourself with people that, you know, like, give you so much. I think that's important. But forget about music. Music is just part of life. I think life should be like that too. Yeah. You should try to engage with people. You, you should try to talk to people that, you know, like, makes you better. That's the way that I see it, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Makes you better, makes you a better person, makes you a better human being makes you learn something new, you know, that we should be, we are what we are surrounded with all the time. So, so I, I think we, as human beings, we should try at least to try to, you know, like experience, experiments, good situations and moments in our lives instead of negative. I, I prefer always positive. Yeah. So um, that's what I, what I try to do when it comes to musicians. But believe me, I've been in situations with millions of musicians collaborating or whatever, that sometimes it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. I'm very flexible, to be honest. We, what I mean with flexible is like, I always try to see the positive sides of things. So even though if it's someone that I'm playing and I don't connect that much, I try to find the good thing about it, you know? Indeed. But, but that but, doesn't necessarily happen with people that have the same background as you do. No, not because, at all. Uh, and I mean, at a certain point, you moved to the U.S., right? To, mm -hmm. wh where did you go? To uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So when you were in Los Angeles, you started interacting with uh, with new musicians, with other people. Yes. How was the impact? Because you, and for it, me, it was a big pan impact actually, because I'm coming from Cuba, and if if you know, I'm sorry that I'm just looking at professor, but no. if if you guys are not that involved with the Cuban culture, we have been in a way kind of like isolated from the whole world because our political, well, first of all, we are an island. And, and we, the embargo and too. The, everything, yeah. There have been many things that has made us very set apart from the whole world. So in a way we have created a very unique way of living, what translate that into music as well. And that maybe respond one of your questions as well. Exactly. Which is like maybe we are so isolated that we have created something that I mean, it's, it's doesn't a little exist. paradise when it comes to that because when when you when you well I mean you uh, go beyond the first day impact because everything looks so run down and everything, but as soon as you get beyond that, suddenly you re, you you recognize humanity, and the humanity of people is is incredible. It really overwhelms you. It's it's. Uh, fantastic interaction with everybody and music is pervasive so yes yes it, it is it looks like a microcosmos in some way it is true so this is why i was asking you exactly that question it is it is true it has as everything in life it has the positive side and negative too because you know obviously that's the post that i was talking about then we have since we've been isolated we haven't had that much of transculturation in yeah. our country is yeah. only my you know my parents are from cuba my grandparents are from Cuba, my great-grandparents are from Cuba, and that's the same situation for all my friends. You come to a place like Los Angeles, and that was why I started like this. It was a big impact for me. Why? Because you go to a country, like everyone has family from somewhere else. My parents are from China. My, um, uh, my, my father is from China. My mother is from Bulgaria. My parents are from Puerto Rico. My mother is from Benin. So it's like I didn't know that in my life. <laughs> I didn't know many things. I was like in a different planet for so many years. And then I come with 21 years old, 22 years old, 
not talking English at all, and just to a new world, completely, of possibilities. I didn't even know what was a credit card. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we are so isolated that we didn't have so many things that, yeah. in a way, is so good, yeah. but in other ways, is not that good. What so year was you, that? Uh, that was 2009, 2000. Be, uh, in January. That was when I defected from okay. Cuba to the States. Yeah. So it was definitely a big impact. And when it comes to music, too. But music has a powerful thing, which is like you can, even though you are not there, you, you can be there listening to music. So I had that before. So I was listening already to a lot of music from the States, obviously jazz and any kind of music because I'm, I like any kind of genres. I'm not like against any genre. I like music. A person who creates music or I don't. But when it comes to genre, I don't care. You know, I like pop, I like rock, I like reggaeton, I like anything. It's just like there are some mainstream music that I don't like because we can talk about these three hours. <laughs> but, 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 but the genres, no, I love all of them. So I was listening to a lot of music while I was in Cuba, and I was connected to many other countries that I didn't know, just because music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, music was, wasn't that big of an impact for me then, because I already knew, musically, many other traditions, many other cultures. But not through interaction. But not through interaction at all. So I had to communicate with people. I had to, I had to become a global citizen in a way. Right. Which for me today, uh, it has been like 14 or 13 years that I've been, uh, 15 years actually that I've been living in the States. Um, now I feel, you know, like every day that I think about that decision, I feel very grateful for that. Yeah. That I made the decision to go to a place like the States, very multicultural. And I have met so many people from different countries. And I have really become, today I can say that I'm a very global citizen. I don't really... To be honest, I don't belong anywhere anymore. Totally which in a way, everywhere. which in a, yes, which in a way is sad for some people, but for me, it has become my life, and I am very happy with it. I'm very happy to be just a human being living. So, a fresh anywhere. question, because I, I've always been a believer of the fact that if you want uh, a little serious self improvement, you have to place yourself outside of your comfort zone. Definitely. So I love it that. seems to me that you are just uh, the very embodiment of that idea. So yes. being constantly outside of your constant comfort zone. Yeah, it has been my life. <laughs> so I think music has been feeded by that. My life has been like that. I made the decision of going out of my country forever and it's leaving my family decision. behind. Leaving my family behind didn't know when I was going to be able to see them. Because as a Cuban, you defected from Cuba to the States. And they, in a way, banned you in yeah. Cuba. Yeah. You know what? I haven't been able to play in my country for 15 days. Oh for 15 years, 15 I'm sorry. Years. So I've been 15 it... years outside of Cuba, and they banned me. It's like, okay, you are a traitor. So you cannot... when, when did you see your family back? I saw them like four years after I made the decision. Only because, well, some of my family. I still have family in Cuba, and I go to visit them. But at that, at that moment, I couldn't. So I had to wait until I was... Uh, an American resident to then plan start planning my first trip to Mexico to see my family because I couldn't go to Cuba. Oh, okay. So I had to bring all of them, you know, uh, who, well, no, all of them, them go to... some of them to Mexico so I could travel there and wow. see my family again. So obviously, the moment that I decided to go to the States, it was like a big risk for me. Indeed. And a and, um, very stressful moment too, in a way, you know. And, um, but your, your parents were supportive. Yes, all the time, all the time. They they know they know what music means to me, and also I had a a good, a very incredible justification. Was like Quincy was telling me that if you make it to the states, I could help you. So and that, so that's a, the next question. So when did you meet? Where did you meet? You were at, uh, um, yeah, actually, Festival, actually, I met right? I met Quincy in Europe in, in Europe. at the Montreux Festival. Montreux Festival. Festival. Yeah, that was two thousand five, uh, two thousand five, two thousand six. And then, um, yeah, I met him actually in uh, the festival. I was selected between t uh, 12 pianists in the world to play at the festival. And then I was the Cuban <clears throat> musician there. We, we played for him. And I was very fortunate. He came to me and he said, I like what you're doing. What, uh, how can I help you? And I was, the, well, God, I the God has spoken, right? Oh, my gosh. You know, to, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was, you know, 2019, I don't remember. 
And I was, oh my God, Jesus, Quincy <laughs> Jones is telling me that he wants to help me make a career. But I always been very... It made your decision for you at that <laughs> point, right? Actually, in a way, but it took me three years. Oh, it took okay. me three years because I was in Cuba. And so how I'm going to make it to the States? It kind of reminds me of the story of Chucho Valdez, because I think he went through the same, a similar... No, Chucho, you know? no Chucho, because Chucho, Chucho was living in Cuba the whole time. Chucho actually just... You've been living no, outside. Uh, wait, wait, Chucho is the father. So the, the son? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Chucho uh, is the son. Bebo. Bebo. Bebo is Bebo. the one that left. Bebo is the, yes. the one that left. Bebo did the same. Okay. Yeah, he left Cuba very young and he couldn't go back actually to Cuba. Yeah. That happens a lot, unfortunately, in our country. Indeed. And that's what I said before that we have, obviously, as a country, as a humanity or whatever, that we have many positive things, that we have many negative, negative as well. Things, as yeah. I'm telling you, you know, it's incredible that a country doesn't accept your own musicians. We're not talking only about anything else. It's music. Music is something that really brings people together. together. And also, it's very contradictional because I, what I am here today, and you are introducing me as a Cuban musician. So it's like, no, you're, it's, it's, uh, in a way, we are ambassadors of our country, you know? Yeah. So it's incredible that they don't accept that, and they don't really want us to go back just because they want to be in control. And yeah. sometimes we human beings are, in my opinion, so, so absurd like that, that they just want the power for them mm -hmm. and they want it, the credit for them. And they don't really want to allow people just to be themselves and just to fly. And, and yet we're here thinking of Cuba and uh, uh, on one hand desiring for Cuba to open up, but at the same time being fearful about it because that might ruin the magic in a way. Uh, this is what my feeling about it. So again, you know, what's going to happen when, when you uh, see it from outside, but we are also living in a society of freedom, a society that even though we sometimes complain so much, but we don't really, really, really know today what it is happening in Cuba for our people, which is like, they don't even can say anything that what I'm saying right here, right now, mm -hmm. which is nothing, but it's just my opinion. And I haven't go even like, deep in when it comes to politics or of anything course, like that so then it's very stressful for them so yeah. i want also my people to be able to just be themselves and don't yeah. be thinking about i need to go through through so many filters in order to make my life because if you don't go to the revolution filter you don't make it in cuba in any aspect of life of course and that's very sad that's and very that's sad. something that i also to be honest as a cuban i prefer to sacrifice so many other things that for other people are like, oh, I don't want to change this and that and that and that in Cuba. But then when you think about what peop my people are, you know, suffering right now in Cuba, to be honest, I, I really prefer to sacrifice everything else, but they have some freedom and they can live their life uh, at least just, you know, as as most of, most people outside of my country. Indeed. It's like, a, you know, like we can be talking about this forever, you know, politics course, are very, course. you know, but sensitive. it kind of reminds me of a moment when I was in Cuba and uh, there was um, the, the social dinner of this conference. And we were lucky enough as to have Kumpai Segundo sitting with us at the table, the, the great Kumpai Segundo. And uh, it was interesting, the whole conversation with Kumpai Segundo was based on uh, images and uh oh, okay uh, there were uh, i don't know how to say this it, it like uh metaphors so he was constantly talking about uh the chicken hen the the, the the sorry the 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 chickens and the and the hen and the, the eggs and uh, okay. picking up the eggs but all the images that he was creating were actually talking about the cultural moment and the political yes. moment in, yes uh, but so you had to read between the line or in uh, Cuba, you have to read between the lines all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but was, no one can say, you know, like straight things. So was, everyone find a way to say it. But you, could, you could interpret the conversation the way you want it. But if you oh my gosh. had a prior idea about <laughs> their belief, you could actually read it in a very interesting and slightly critical way. So mm -hmm. there was a way to yeah. communicate using metaphors and aphorisms. That happens in music too. <laughs> in music, even, even more subtle. Because that's an emotional conversation. Yeah, it's true. True. It's so, true. Uh, as soon as you contextualize it, suddenly it crystallizes into something very specific, mm -hmm. a conversation that you're actually having and involving with all the audience that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. so, Which one? So it's a very powerful, very powerful it's mechanism. True. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'd like to... Let's pass the ball. <laughs> pass the ball to... Then, then I will leave the floor. <laughs> Thank you. 
most of all, thank you for being so candid about it and also telling us about your life, which is always, uh, you know, something that some, for some people is hard. Some of, some of some other people is is just a way of life, and it seems you are, you, you know, very natural in talking about these things. So thank you. Simone, Simone has uh, uh, Simone Bolini has a past with uh, music and acoustic engineering. So I'd like to start with that and a little bit before. Uh, you should know that both Simone and Fausto are among the very, very first graduates of music and acoustic engineering when it was still in its em em embryonal form. So it was in embryo. It was we were just trying to figure out what the heck are we going to do with this program. So back then it was a track of um, computer computer science and engineering. And there was nothing about music. There was no music at the Polytechnic in Milan. So it was, we were, unfortunately, unfortunately which is, you know, kind of bad if you think about it. This is one of the most uh, highly sought after, highly rated universities in the world, in the top 20 in all categories and most categories and uh, according to QS ranking. And so it's absurd that we don't have music at the Polytechnic. So we, we were just squeezing our brain, trying to figure out how to bring our passions in. And I think some people were very, very functional in doing this. And I'm just referring to Simone and Fausto because they were my inspiration for many things that happened afterwards. And uh, so Simone graduated in 2008. I believe you graduated, Fausto graduated in 2009, 2010. I don't remember. 2011. 2011. 2013. Oh, you were, you, you in 2010. 11 was my 11. master. Okay, so my memory is yes. uh, foggy. Feels like I've known them for forever. So, it's, uh, <laughs> all right, that's nice. Anyway, um, so talking about Simone. Simone, in a way, I see Simone as kind of the other side of the range when it comes to music. Simone is an intimate, very intimate, very, um, his messages in music are very, very intimate. So I like to see how this was developed and how this expanded. But I'd like to ask you a few questions about how you started, because you were at the Conservatory of Como, correct? Uh, actually, I was just in a private music school. In a private music school. In, in Como, I had a, a teacher. And uh, yes, I, I started maybe with uh, six, seven, when I was six or seven years old. Okay. So I had always two passions, uh, music and piano. I was really impressed by a lot of musicians. And science was not in the horizon for you? Or? Uh, science, you mean? Yes. Well, I, I was passionate about computers. So right, I had right. my first uh, Pentium computers in the 90s. <laughs> and I was trying to, yeah, to write my algorithms. So I was always in between the two worlds. And then after the high school, I, I thought, well, it would be really great to make something with music. And my, t my parents said, uh, that would be nice if you go on with music, but you also need a plan B. <laughs> so I thought, what, what could be Don't the plan B? About these things, right? <laughs> and so for me, it was natural, the natural choice to, to try with uh, engineering, so computer science. And I started with a bachelor. Um, it was somehow, on, on the way, it was somehow frustrating to be always in between the two side because of course uh, piano needs a lot of work a lot of hours and uh, to be an engineer needs also a lot of hours yeah, these are two extreme uh, expertise and us, so. i was somehow in a Don't we all know yeah <clears throat> somehow in a in a crisis at the end of bachelor and and then i got to know augusto and august augusto had a really musical perspective and we had the possibility to make a uh, thesis about yeah. jazz, improvisation, and algorithms together. So it was, for me, a point of, uh, how to say, where the two things were coming together. Come together yeah. yes. Well, I should probably say something about this, because he, I was his official mentor for the thesis, but in fact, I was kind of tricking him, because we were having a weekly session where we were talking about, you know, modeling, Markov models, and the kind of methods to, you know, preserve, I mean, to, to capture the mechanisms of uh, some very simple mechanisms of the improvisation. 
but at the same time, I was making sure that we would actually spend at least an hour a week on the piano to see how it worked. And of course, that was my personal uh, jazz piano lecture that I was getting for free from uh, uh, from my favorite pianist at the time, right? And uh, uh, so it was wonderful because I don't think he learned as much uh, as I did learn from him. <laughs> So he, he, you were very good at, the, at your thesis, despite me, not thanks to me, I have to say. So. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was fantastic. I think I talked about your thesis in a TEDx talk somewhere, so you can find that there. We were talking about, it's in Italian, it's a TEDx in Italian, talking about the virtual duo, virtual jazz duo, which was a lot of fun. I remember, you know, there, there are videos out there that show how you can use the virtual duo software to do a little bit of introspection somehow. So you can uh, play with yourself or with something that tries to capture your way of, uh, of doing uh, improvisation on the piano. So it was, it was, it was great. And, uh, it was a lot of fun, for sure. So but it comes from uh, probably a different mind frame in approaching music. Uh, so uh, how much have you relied on interaction? How much have you relied on, uh, let's say, melodic, harmonic, uh, rhythmic planning? In, uh, in your mind. Uh, so do you, how much do you share this, the approach that Alfredo has, for example, in, uh, in uh, going about a performance, a live performance? You mean now just for the playing, Today, for, 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 yeah, the, yeah. for piano playing? After years of being uh, in this dualism between being an engineer and being a professional musician. I think there, there are uh, advantages and disadvantages. On one side, I have the impression I have an analytical approach. So if I know I'm weak on one side, for example, on the rhythmical part, or I have difficulties with the harmony, I try to, to analyze the situation intellectually and try to solve the problems. Um, and maybe this is a good, good part, uh, but sometimes I also would like to be more spontaneous and just have something coming out. Um, once I, I, uh, I don't want to compare myself to, to Bill Evans, but once I heard Bill Evans in an interview, he said, I need the time, I have to understand stuff, I cannot just play, I have to, to go deep and, and try and understand how it works and then I can play it. It's also hard to understand Bill Evans because whatever he left in terms of uh you know, his heritage in terms of explaining what he was doing was always very hard to understand. He couldn't explain it so easily. There are many, sure. many interviews out there uh, about, uh, for example, in uh, Jazz Piano, uh, Piano Jazz it was a program with Mario Merpartland, and, and he was trying to explain how it works when you, you start from, uh, you know, the, the lead sheet. And uh, so he started by saying uh, the lead sheet tells you something, but usually what comes out if you read the lead sheet is crap, which is true. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a simplified course. There is only the backbone. And then he was trying to explain how you lift it up, how you build the harmonic progression behind it. And then you don't want to go there. You want to go someplace else. But he couldn't really explain how he was doing that. He was just giving examples. And it's interesting because that's one of the reasons that prompted us here at the Polytechnico to do this weekly meeting last year. It was called Talking Music. It's so hard to talk about music, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Talking Music is, uh, tries to capture that sentiment that music you have to listen to, but at the same time, it would be nice to be able to explain it. Why are you attracted by something? What is it that is capturing you? So I, I thought that Bill Evans was the clear example of how hard it is, because his art obviously was very refined, very, very between the lines, and it's very hard to explain it. So how did you go about understanding, for example, Bill Evans or Keith Jarrett? Uh, I know what your, your, your gods are on Earth, so I'm wondering. Well, from the engi engineering uh, point of view, there are stuff that can be described with uh, math. So that's why also in, in, in the thesis we uh, focused on model scales, intervals, uh, trying to uh, analyze patterns. Mm -hmm. And this stuff is something that you can also put in numbers somehow. Uh, and this is 
maybe the the easy part where you can put uh, science and, and music together. But when you write something, does it come on the piano or does it come on paper? Oh, well, it comes at the piano, yes. It okay. comes probably from doodling at the piano or just when I uh, I have the time to, to play freely without any deadline or something like that. And then you come up maybe with, a, with an idea that you like and then you you flirt with the idea somehow. Yeah, let's see how it sounds. And how much chance is there when you do that? I mean, how much? Uh, maybe two like times that? in a year where I really, when I really have the impression, oh, I want to develop this. But um, yes, not, not, not very often in my case. How about you? How, does it happen um, when you write something? Does it happen on the piano? Or sometimes you think about something because you're in the shower and just mumbling a melody that you love? And, uh, uh, to be honest, my process is very <laughs> disorganized. <laughs> I um, Obviously, mostly is when I'm sitting in the piano improvising and something comes up and I just want to develop that. But to be honest, lately, no. Because I, I don't, you know, since touring, I don't really have the opportunity also even to have a piano with me. Right. But it's a good that we have like so many tools today and I have my iPhone. <laughs> yes. And I record like rhythms in my, if you listen to my voice memo, it's full of crazy things. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, I have many rhythms there, melodies, or I talk to myself and say, put this harmony here with this other melody. And then, <laughs> and then there I go to the piano. You know what? I recorded my, my album with Pedrito. I have a duo with a percussionist. Pedrito Martinez is like yes, a yes, very yes. incredible percussionist. We recorded the duo just sending voice memos to really? each other. <laughs> we, we did, we did, oh, no, not recorded. I made a mistake. We, we arranged the, we, 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 we arranged. did the whole album just sending voice memos. Amazing. Yeah, he was like, oh, you know what? On top of that, I can do like, I was like, okay, but what about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the whole thing was just like that because it was in New York and I was in Los Angeles. Oh, so we didn't have like other things or talking to the phone but he was on tour I was on tour so we said you know what we are not going to be able to talk to the phone let's just send voice memos so I will I will listen to that and you will listen to me and then we record like this and I was like on the piano also like playing whatever I you know I, I liked and I and send it to him you know so it was like that bass, li wonderful. bass lines melodies uh, chords or whatever and he was sending me the same you know like something rhythms or whatever you know so it was like that and that's a good tool that we have now also um, I mean, it's, it's endless. The way that we can compose is, yeah, we have many options today. And, and usually does it start from a riff that is catchy rhythmically and harmonically, or does I it mean, start from a melody for you? I mean, for me, it's everything. You know, it's sometimes it's a melody that I'm listening right now or whatever, and I just record that one, or then... To be honest, you know, we are very rhythmic people. Yeah. So usually from rhythm, I, I create a lot from rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find myself creating a lot from rhythms that I hear, not only created from myself, but from people that they don't know. Indeed. You know, they can be talking or something. I, I'm like paying attention to the conversation and they are creating rhythms. And I'm like, um, I like that. I like you know, that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I put that into my voice memo. <laughs> yes, indeed, <laughs> and I yes, steal indeed. it from them. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yes, but indeed. it's not it's not music, but it's music already. It's a you know? seed. It's a seed. Yes, it's something can... that I take, you know, or a construction. It can be a construction. And so I did that once. It was two guys just doing like a you know construction rhythm, and yeah. they were really on time and everything. I was like, wow, look at what and they. It do. wasn't even rapping. It was just conversation. It was rhythmically organized. They were. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So I was like, you know what? That's a five, whatever. You know, I, I like that. And, and I, then I put it in, in, into music. That then we put a, the instrument, the instruments on top, and that's it. You know, is 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 a way also of, of creating. You know, music is. I mean, not music, but sound. We are surrounded by sounds. You know, like indeed, so. Why not? Indeed, indeed. Just like just take all of those sounds that are surrounded us and just create but music with them. This this. Uh, and begs the question because I think you you do a similar thing in your composition. You there is often a rhythmic surprise. So, for example, you take away one beat from a measure that otherwise would be a power two, like um, four four four, 
and then suddenly you find yourself playing a seven and a half eight, just a, a half a beat, so that it closes after you know three or four measures. It kind of comes together again. That surprise uh, in uh, is often done by led by uh, a melody rather than being something that you insert forcefully in order to create surprise. Um, do you aim at introducing these surprises, the rhythmic surprises, because you've done it quite a few times yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, do you aim at doing that uh, with a specific design, rhythmic design in mind, or because you want to, you want to uh, emphasize the melody and make sure that everybody pays attention to that change? I don't know if I was able to explain what I mean. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm, try uh, I'm trying. Mean, it, it, it's so, uh, <laughs> now we become very engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love no, it. I love, do, I'm learning do, a lot. You do I'm have learning. many, many rhythmic, uh, unexpected uh, shortenings of the measure, something that, yes. that changes you, not only using uh, e uneven, Sorry, um, odd odd rhythms. Odd rhythms. But sometimes you steal one beat or half a beat from a measure, and you start surprisingly again at the start before it ends. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a rhythmic surprise that you're introducing. You you seem yeah. to be doing it a lot. I was wondering what drives you to do that, because of course it's beautiful. I think I, I I think you know in in our in I think it. it it's based on my roots because when it comes to Cuban roots, the African roots, that happens a lot. A conversation between many other musicians that everyone is doing a different rhythm, but at the same time, all of them are part of one thing. Right. So remember in the rumba, for example, where, where is where my roots come from? You have, you have many people part of it, but doing contrapunts. So yeah. it's like everyone is in a different place. If you don't really know the, if you don't know the codes, you feel like it's like a, it's very related to Bach in yeah. a way yeah. because you have you could be playing one melody, but you could do like five polyphonic melodies or six or whatever, you know, with two hands. So it's the same, but that the difference between and that one brain. the bata mm -hmm. is the only the only instruments from the Cuban traditional culture that could be something similar to that because our three drums that only one person is doing. So it's like a polyphony of three, three uh, melodies. Everyone so going into a different way, but they meet at the same point. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to rumba, it's different because each of the person are playing one conga. The clave never changes. The clave is the, the ground. Down. And, the ground. Uh, like what, like what I'm saying? I will create some. I will create. I will create something. But, um, so let's say. Take this out. Okay. 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 This is very. It's, it's, it's very easy because it's, it's just trying to do the rhythm that I was gonna play with two hands. You know, you can play the clave is always the same. Well, it's not always the same. It could be different. It could be the song clave, which is pan. We have the rumba clave, which is a little different. Yeah, completely different. But then what happens is that they have six people playing each one code, one different code. So it becomes like a big, I don't know how to say, like a symphony of different contrapunts or whatever. A rhythmic counterpoint. A counterpoint, a competing, a, rhythm, right? competing rhythm, but at the same time, all of them, they know how to meet each other. You know, it's yeah. not like, well, for some people it could be also like when you are far away of the culture, it could be also that maybe too intriguing or too difficult for you to get it. But once you're part of the culture, you feel every, you know, every hit that they're, that they're, you know, and, and, and it's only one or two person that really go out of that. There are like four people that they go straight. There's one guy like just and there is only the quinto and sometimes the tumba that they go out. What I mean is like they can improvise on top of that. Right. Again, you know, as... Also, because otherwise I you lose the audience, right? I think of a percussion only because I, well, first of all, the piano can be anything. And 
of the percussion instrument. Right. But but then when it comes to them playing the percussion, I don't even want to go there because I respect so much the rhythm that they have or whatever. I am not a specialist is what I'm saying mm -hmm. when it comes to that. But I, what I'm really at is an admirer of them. And what I try to do with the piano is just, you know, get all of those rhythms and put it here. You know right, what I'm saying? Since right. it's my culture, is where I'm coming from. Right. And that's why also we have so many rhythmic situations when it comes to the piano also in our in our culture because you know you can have for some people might might be a little a little difficult sometimes when it comes to modern cuban music because it's a very complicated sometimes uh rhythmically mm -hmm. but the, the 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 bass the roots are in a way kind of simple because they they, they usually song montuno in my opinion maybe you tell me but i think it's a little uh, simple so you don't so it's what I'm doing at the end with the with the with the piano is kind of the same as the percussion right it's, it's what we did with this instrument this is not from Cuba you know yeah, 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 so yeah. we say like okay how we can incorporate this instrument into our culture, right? And then we go with the with, with these kind of rhythms that became later tumbaos or different rhythms. We have a we have a dance song. Yeah. With the piano, with the, with the do? downbeat is actually in the you 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 it's it shifted compared to the rest. <laughs> The music, the Cuban classic, this is the like Cuban classical music in a way, because that was music from the 50s. Ernesto Lepona is one of the biggest right. Cuban classical composer. He did a lot of classical training in the States or whatever he did in style like Gershwin or all of that, but at the same time he was from Cuba. So what right. he did was incorporating class, kind of like classical Cuban music with, you know, because he did Cuban rhythms mm. with kind of like a classical background. Indeed, it, indeed, know. indeed. So it, I don't know, I, I mean, you know, we can be talking about so this. It, it must have been, so you, did you have to come up with uh, methods for including the piano in the in the Cuban music at the beginning, or Not there really, was already yeah. some sort of a tradition there, right? Yes, yes, yeah. you know, in Cuba we have like, a, you know, fortunately for me today, we have so many people in the past that have yeah. shown, yeah. you know, like many developing when it comes to the Cuban piano. Yeah. So then today is, to be honest, I have to be honest, it's just like me, as I said before, I think my apport to music becomes not only coming from Cuba, coming from the world, mm -hmm. putting the world into my Cuban music, which is something kind of a little more modern and new for my country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, six and many people that uh, for so many years it has been a lot of people just playing Cuban pianos and uh, Cuban piano in a traditional way. Right. Usually, you you talk to someone and what they know from Cuba, it could be like the Buena Vista Social Club. Yeah. That's what people relate the most, and that's music from our bodies. Yeah, yeah, it's, it has changed in the meantime. Yeah, of it course. has been changing so much, but since we didn't have you know, like many opportunities also to express ourselves outside of our country. It has been music for ourselves for so many years. So it has been changing a lot. And also it's, it's difficult sometimes, as I said before, the rumba, and it's not the same. You get this piece, of, okay. A little bit of blues. Yes, you start, <laughs> you start incorporating things that, that was what happened in our country. You know, we had like so many influences from you know, American music and all of that, as I said before, that people like Chucho Valdez, for example, yeah. they started, started listening to Harry, Harry and Fire and all of those right. those groups, like, you know, like, uh, punk or uh, whatever, and they started putting that into our music. But let's be honest, I detected a little bit of progressive rock yesterday when you were playing. Is I that possible? It. Yeah, I know, there was something there. That was, <laughs> that was what I was saying in a way, before, before generations before, I cannot really tell you, okay, this is a group that you can really listen that it has been like a classical jazz background, but they incorporate any kind of traditional music from any, like rock, for example. Absolutely. That's something that we haven't tried that much, 
but that's something that is in my blood right now also because it's something that I've been exploring outside yeah. of my country. But, uh, the, the, but there must be some common roots that come from before. I'm, I'm just thinking of Gonzalo Rubalcaba. I'm yes. thinking of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, also the Dominican tradition, uh, the Dominican we Islands. We have, we have a lot of yeah, there is a lot in common with it. Yeah, and, and there, there is so much in common, but you can tell that they have been developing in a different way, maybe because of the interaction with other people and so on. I think, I, I would say, you know, again, I, I, to be honest, I have to be honest, I, I haven't analyzed that in a very deep way just to mm -hmm. say why it has, you know, transformed me so much. But I would say right now, in my opinion, I think it's just because we have come out of Cuba. We now have a very global way of thinking in the whole world, not only for mm. Cubans or Dominicans or the Caribbean. Right. It's happening in the whole world. Right. So right. I you know, I it's easier when you are sharing your music and your life with other people, it's easier for you to incorporate who they are and obviously they are music as well. So your music becomes what they are as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I indeed. think right now we are living in a moment in the whole world that is very easy and for me very powerful and good that we can really you know, like explore more between each other. Even, Absolutely. Even like you don't have to be with the person. You can be like connected. You know, right, and, right, and right. Listening to a conversation. And, right, and right. Just learning from that. Yeah, absolutely. You had that opportunity. Long time ago, so. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. I'm just wondering because I know that among your influences, if I can, uh, uh, don't move, stay here. <laughs> don't get away from there. But I, but I'm I'm also curious because I know that one of your greatest influences was uh, Gonzalo Rubacaba himself, right? And uh, or do you consider him as one of your influences? Or uh, I know you you really liked him, but I. Yeah. Can you hear the voice? Because it seems to be okay. It's been too. Yes. Okay. Oh, I hope that. Sorry. Um, well, it's difficult not to like Gonzalo Rubalcaba. Uh, it's it's uh, an impressive pianist, like Alfredo. I'm also very impressed by Alfredo. So, you are just. Uh, uh, impressed. For for example, from the concert of yesterday, I, I went home with a lot of ideas and motivation to to practice. Uh, actually, I have a. Can I ask something, Alfredo, yeah. about the technique? Uh, I'm. Let's talk about anything you want. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm really impressed about a lot of stuff. Uh, just one of of those about uh, the technique. I see you have a mix between. Um, moments where you are really percussive, so you play octaves, you play very fast octaves, very precise, very loud with a uh, strong a tone, sound. a lot of sound, yes. And then I, uh, you have moments where, where the music is very intimate, very soft, and you can play really uh, nuances. So I'm, I'm really impressed about, about yeah. this dynamic, and I wanted to ask how you develop this technique, what was your story about getting the control on the keyboard? For me, this is really interesting. I think, I think when it comes to technique in the piano, I think it's thanks to my teachers. I had great teachers, classical music. And I was playing classical music. I actually play classical music every day in my house also. I play even more classical music to anything else when it comes to playing music of others. The other part of the time, I prefer to improvise. But... Classical music is something that attracts me so much. And I've been not only in the analytic part, but also playing it, you know, like actually playing classical music as an interpreter. And that's something that really develops your technique very, because they really, you know, they really explode all the possibilities when it comes to the piano. So I think it's because my teachers, I have to be honest, the way that they... I had the honor of having great, great, great classical teachers that they study even like in, in, in Moscow with people from the past like Tchaikovsky or Stravinsky, all of that. And they had a really good background and I had that honor of having great teachers and I was so involved with classical music. Um, and I think that's definitely one of the reasons that maybe I've been able to explore all my possibilities here and then 
share it with the piano easily. You know, when it comes to ideas or I go to the piano and I do it, even though I, I feel it's because them, to be honest. Um, obviously, it's a later I can analyze that it has been also a lot of my hours improvising and trying new things. Because when you try new things and go out of the box that, that, uh, that, that we were talking about that before, meaning that you don't really care about making mistakes, you learn a lot. Because if I only play what is easy for me, then you become very comfortable in a way because you know that you are good at that. And I, you know, we can keep always say with caradura, which is which means that I don't care. You know, I don't care making mistakes. I don't care people saying he made a mistake. You know, for me, it's like, who cares? I play the piano. I'm having fun. And that's it. It is related to my personality. Personality sometimes could help or could not help also in the way that you develop things as a human being, it doesn't, it, but also translate into music. Because if you are a very talented person, but then you, your mind in a way tells you, you know what, don't go there because you're going to make a mistake. Don't do this, don't do that. Then you start, uh, in a way, you start putting barriers, borders to, to your learning process. So then I've been very fortunate that I am a human being that I don't care about making mistakes at all. So I could do it right now. I don't care if I made mistakes. And they said, you know what? I made a mistake in the second. I don't care. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting better at something. And that's what I, what I feel also. It has been very powerful for me to develop more technique and more uh, ways of feeling comfortable when I play the piano. And it's just like, you know, we can go to any water, you know, any, any culture, any water, and I'm going to feel good. I had that the same conversation with Chick Korea because Chick is something, is, it was someone uh, that always was developing with new musicians, with young musicians. He always wanted to learn. Learn was such an important word for him. And I think that's something that I also, that, you know, it, it stuck with me, you know, since the first moment that he told me that. I was like, Alfredo, I don't care. Show me Cuban music. Show me how to play your thing that I don't know. And I was like, Chicora is telling me that to teach wow. him something. So then you, when you are surrounded with people like with that type of mentality, you become in a way like them or not. But for me, fortunately, I was like, you know what? I want to develop something like that. I want to be able to say, what do you know that I don't? Show me. I want to I wanna teach me. I want to I wanna just learn right now. And again, as I said before, I just try to get as much as I can from everyone because everyone in a way is special. You don't have to be a great musician to teach me something. Sometimes better lessons that I have got is not from greatest musicians, to be honest. And it's only not because they are not great. They are great, obviously, but you have to connect with something, you know, and sometimes they don't want to share. So you can be like an incredible musician with a very high level and maybe you are, your ego, your whatever you have inside that you don't want to share, you want to keep it for yourself, and then I don't learn anything, even though you are amazing. But it comes with this other person, which is very humble, and want to share the little things that they know, but from the heart, and then you learn so much. And that's the beauty of our life, too, in a way, is that we have so many people with diversity, and we can be able to learn from so many people in, 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 in our lives. At least that's the way that I approach to music too. That's, that's, it's very interesting if I can say something. Uh, one of the things that we talk about in this course in computer music representations and modeling is also perception and a music perception. And there is a state of mind that is called a state of flow. Uh, it's a situation where when you start doing something and uh, you just uh, become suddenly very creative, nobody can shake you off that state. Uh, someone talks to you and you don't hear that person talking to you. And that's an interesting thing because it, when you are in a state of flow, something that you just described happen. I mean, there is uh, all the centers in the brain that are associated to self-criticism and doubt and this sort of thing are shut down. So you don't care about looking bad. You don't care about making mistakes. You don't care, you, you just are free to go and things, wonderful things happen at that time. Now you can do this consciously, as you're saying, 
or you can do it unconsciously because you enter the state of flow. Sting, for example, uh, um, I mean, Dan Leviting, who was actually our guest once, uh, was his advisor when it comes to brain sciences, and he was recommending Sting to always have uh, a room that would help him get into a state of flow, in a creative state of flow. Uh, so always have the same kind of rugs around, pillows and stuff like that, so that you always see the same thing. It's much easier to get into that particular state of mind that allows you to do things without self-criticism or doubt. It's interesting because you're saying that, and at the same time, I, and I'm also thinking about, again, trying to go out of, kind of like trying to go out of the box, which means that, yes, we can be in that state of flow, but then... You know, obviously, this is a conversation, so it's to the bill of things. And then I feel that then if you are, I think what I was trying to say is that you have to be comfortable with yourself. But also when it comes to just being yourself, I don't like that, that anymore. I prefer just to be comfortable with myself, but being open to the possibilities around me. In that way, I learn a little faster. Because if I'm only my mood and then I want something similar to a sting and which will be something similar every day, then I will be missing opportunities. So I, so it's kind of like a balance. Again, you know, everyone has different way of approaching and different way of thinking. I think you just put the finger on the weakness of the reasoning. Because that reasoning is, is perfect when... Uh, uh, when you are creating something on your own, but it yeah. doesn't work when you're interacting with others in, exactly. the, in the creation. Exactly. So, I didn't, I didn't want to find maybe when you are by your, you know, like on your own, then maybe, and you want to create something specific, then I understand the point. But for if we, if we talk about in general, I prefer the other way, which is like you're comfortable with yourself and you don't really mind about just making mistakes and learn, but at the same time, you are open to all the possibilities that are around you. And for that, you have to be also flexible and you know, uh, being able to listen to what is surrounded you. Um, so, you know. If you agree, because it's uh, 12.45, yes. <laughs> I would say we could speak hours and hours about this. Uh, yeah, it's there. Are, many, many things to, to talk about, but maybe we are missing one important lesson that we could have. Uh, and it's also the, uh, the, the way Alfredo with his trio goes on the stage and interact, the interplay they have in between uh, uh, they, in, in, in between each other you know, on the stage, but the way they interact and the way they, uh, they bring the audience to them. Uh, so that's the, the the most important lesson I think uh, I had when I saw Alfredo uh, on YouTube first the Tiny Desk show. It's one of the the most amazing Tiny Desk uh, ever <laughs> performances. Yes, so check it out if you if you haven't seen it yet. But also last night's show and the show you did at my festival in season in 2021 uh, was amazing because people in the end love it even though uh, they never listen to to you uh, why because that's the main lesson we could have they interact uh, they have the, the right interplay they smile they 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 staring each other uh, instead of uh, looking at uh, shit or yeah con continuous interacting improvising uh, and we are Italian, and we are losing our traditions. I'm, I think uh, as uh, Sicilian, I have uh, many things in common with uh, Cuba because we are an island. We are, we were isolated. Uh, I, I was going to say that. I was going to say that that also is the way that we are as human beings. But that doesn't mean also that is something that people should try i mean yeah. you we have to be what we are and we have to tell and we have to express with people who we are but i get your point definitely which is like obviously there is something beautiful that people get when you're smiling yes let's and, just be uh, honest people want happiness people don't want no no one is going to come to you and tell you i'm so looking forward to be sad <laughs> no one is going to tell you that so obviously if you go to the stage with that mentality that you want to be a sad musician and you want to look like this and you don't want to look at your musician and you are like, oh yeah, my, yeah. that's going to express to and the people. You are fine to do it. 
but be free. It's, be it's, free. Not, it's not live show. Free, it's not but that's going to be a little tough on you. You are putting barriers already into yeah. your communication, not only with your musicians, with the audience, with the world. If that's what you want to do, you're fine. You're free to do it. But then you have to analyze sometimes those situations as well. You are also someone who are influenced people with sounds. Maybe you are not a singer and, and, and you, don't, you cannot do it with words, but you can do it with melody, you can do it with harmony, you can do it with rhythms. If your message is a sad message, people are going to be sad. If that's what you want for humanity, that's good. Not me. I get on the stage and I want people to forget about all the problems that yes. they, they have. But we have so many you, problems you won't get to, you to won't get Alfredo to? problem as well. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We have so many problems. But I'm here and I play some sad music the whole time because, again, don't take me wrong, we have a balance in our lives. And that's what you say also. And, and you also, you know, that we sometimes in, on the stage, you know, we, ha we bring so much energy. But sometimes in order to bring that energy and to make that energy powerful, you have to also to settle down. Well, so then yes. contrast and balance is part of life. That's good. But then I wouldn't never in my life go to a stage and just play a sad concert from the beginning to end because that's not me. So again, and also we come from an island like you. We are very happy people. We, the way that we express each other is, you know, we are loud. Look at how loud I'm talking right now. It's like, <laughs> we are loud. <laughs> so it's like, that's, that's my music. It, it, it can, it, it's like, but that's yes, like. that's the right approach. I mean, uh, as Italians, also in the North, we had in the past uh, wonderful uh, traditions, uh, music traditions, as you have with Ayman Maynes, for instance. Maybe so we, we have to play that. Okay, so because we are talking too much, so I, I prefer you play and they make you questions in the end because maybe we're the last part of the, the, the this master class, this lesson, this lecture. Uh, but that's the approach. I mean. Uh, I saw recently a free jazz concert by uh, very, very good Italian musicians. Uh, they were so good in playing that. But I thought then, uh, okay, they are bad in interacting with each other. They are bad on staying on the stage. And people didn't enjoy it uh, a lot, except for a few people that love that, the nerd of th that kind of music, okay? But if I see what you're saying. I, I get it totally. Why? Because they are trying to imitate the New York music stuff coming from the overseas, uh, doing with the wrong approach. The wrong approach, which is the uh, 2022 approach of a depressed uh, student or depressed uh, a musician in Italy, well, I mean. that, that with society uh, uh, come back home and say, uh, okay, I want to be a musician, but my mom say I have to graduate. Yeah. So that's the point. They are studying uh, engineering. I did, so please don't uh, imitate my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but I, uh, I studied engineering. I loved that, but w I, I didn't was, uh, was respectful with music because I had to study because the society tell me to study to get the paper in the end. So what's the, the end that uh, right now I don't know what I do <laughs> because I do, I'm doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> But in the end, I follow the music. I follow the, I follow the passion because it comes back to you. Mm. Uh, but don't waste your time uh, going on the stage and don't en and, uh, and don't enjoy when you're playing. You have to enjoy. That, that's the first uh, yeah, the, the I, first lesson that I Alfredo. Totally uh, I mean, I totally agree. I think music is to enjoy. No matter what kind of music you can play, you can play the most avant-garde music and be happy. I think you should be happy. Yes. What I don't get is like why you have to play intellectual music and be sad. That doesn't make sense for me. Uh, you can be. Th that's also the I'm choice. So happy. That's you also the choice to to be maybe a citizen from uh, Puglia, uh, from Naples, and start uh, start to uh, imitate the uh, I don't know uh, the Norwegian music uh, okay. that it's called. You know, uh, well, maybe. I think. I think I, <laughs> I don't think it's all bad when you have sad music. For example, there is a yes. in, in Israel mm -hmm. the jazz Israeli music, which which I love, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, has a big component of sadness and uh, contrition yes. and so on. But all, I'm, but I think you also mentioned before 
that there is sort of a role. You have to create a roller coaster of emotion so you can have the honest, moment and then honest. make people, you know, explode with uh, with joy immediately after. You have to create that roller coaster somehow, right? I mean, again, I just want to say something. The beautiful thing about life is diversity. Yeah. If you come from a culture like it's like that and you want to do it like that, that's beautiful. Yeah. You want to play the whole concert with that concept? That's good. That's you. Now, you have to also understand a little bit of society because you are an ambassador. You have to be conscious what you, of what you're doing in that moment. When you sit and you play, you have to be conscious. I want to express this. Okay. I do the whole concert that way, as you're saying. Whatever. I don't know. You know, because it's decisions, intuition, decisions. That's the beautiful thing about humanity. It's like we do it like this or we don't or sometimes but what you have to know is that there are people there that they want to have fun too and they you know it has to be a balance in my opinion balance is a very important word well I Alfredo, think balance is important we want to play for us uh, something do. like Jemaila Jemaila correct yeah oh, Jemaila and uh, Ayman Menes okay. Ayman Menes we could say Gracias. Uh, we were talking about this morning about I'm on my nest because it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, it's so easy uh, progression. Uh, just two chords, uh, F and C7, no? and then you have the, the B side. <laughs> but then 
uh, you see, he, he brings international music in the Cuban world. Uh, and last night you you went outside, outside playing, improvising. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, I, also I, Yarel uh, on the bass. Yes, they do. Yeah. So I you... mean, we again. I come from a lot of things. I come from traditional music in Cuba, but I also come from classical music, contemporary classical music, jazz. So many influences. So sometimes it depends on how you feel. Sometimes I do it like right now. I just did it consciously, you know, like very the traditional, you know, I didn't go out of, you know, but sometimes I feel the necessity of doing it. It depends on how you feel at the moment too. But usually in my shows, I do it all the time. Only because, you know, it's part of myself too. I like to explore a little bit more when I'm also on the stage with the guys and I have also more leverage to do it, you know, because they are helping me keep the rhythm and that was why I said I did that too. But I don't want to go too out because then maybe it's going to be difficult and we're going to create a mess, you know, but, but still... We could, we could try. <laughs> we could, yeah. or I could try and play something different, also to have a different. Okay, you know, you want you want yeah. me to play something yes. else? Okay, yes. I'm gonna play one. Of Maybe my also. Let me, let me just play one of my one of my own. This this one is one of my compositions. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no words, no words. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! I don't even know where to start. Maybe people can ask questions now. You want? If you have any questions, I bring I you the microphone. Speechless right now, but who want to start? You? Thank you. Uh, first, uh, thank you for sharing your experience with us and for your music. Uh, it's amazing. And I want to ask you something about the uh, creative process when it comes to improvisation. So you talked about emotion, uh, the sort of uh, engagement with the, with the people, with audience. So I want to, to ask you something about improvisation. I mean, like, um, um, how, how can you create like a sort of a texture uh, with emotions, feelings that you are feeling uh, in that specific moment where you are playing and you are improvising? And how, how you can create this texture with technical stuff, I mean, techniques and uh, harmony, melodies, uh, something when express with some uh, technical stuff, I mean, and your emotions, feelings, what you want to express and what you are feeling uh, deep inside. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, first of all, I want to say something. Improvisation is something that we do every day with our lives. You right now improvising, asking me the question. You, I'm sure that you didn't, that you weren't paying attention to each word, each time that you were using for the words, the rhythm that you were using, the intonation. Did you think about that? No, right? So it's something that comes with practicing. Because you get into the moment right now that you are able to speak between, uh, but not thinking too much about what you are, the way that you are talking, your tone, uh, all of that. You only thinking about the question and trying to uh, maybe put together some words. But sometimes if you get to a certain level, you, you, it's your personality, it's the way that you talk. You read more, you get more words into your language. You are surrounded by people that know better the language, you get better at the language. It's the same with music, the same with improvisation. You start with one note. And from now on, possibilities are endless. So it's the same. I remember being like a young musician. Like I started improvising when I was 13 years old, for example. I was just playing classical music before that. And I was like five or six years playing classical music. So in five, six years, you get good. You can play the piano. You can play a little bit of Chopin or whatever. So basically, I was playing already complicated music, complicated classical music. And then I heard an album that changed my life from Keith Jarrett. I was a kid. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know his background, anything, but I heard that music and impact, had a big impact in my, in, in my life. So I was like, you know what? I want to do something similar. I feel that this guy is just sitting at the piano and just playing. And I want to do something similar. So I went to my piano, 13 years old, and I couldn't play one note. I didn't know how to start. And I understood that day that you have to, you know, if you want to improvise, you have to start slowly, obviously. There is something that is a big development, development until the moment that you want. It's like the whole life is a process of learning. It's, a pro it's an endless process. So then what you're saying, in order to connect emotionally, how are you going to ask a kid that was just born, that he doesn't know how to talk, to communicate with you emotionally. That's difficult, right? It takes time. Why? Because you are the parent, and you start teaching them how to talk in a specific language. And there is a moment that maybe <laughs> when he's two or something, and start putting words together, and then you start communicating with that children. So it's the same two years took them to start talking, listening all the time. It's the same with music. It's going to take time in order for you to get emotionally with someone else and, and to involve with someone else when it comes to improvisation because it only takes time. It takes practice. It takes your time, basically. It's very simple. It's very simple. Improvising is very simple. It's just like you need to you know, put effort into it and sacrifice a little bit other things if you want to improvise with an instrument, obviously. 
you know, we are improvising with the words, but again, with, with the language. For example, right now, English, obviously for me, I'm, I have a broken English. You know, I've been, you know, talking English for 12 years in my life. Still, I have so much to learn. Obviously, if I talk Spanish to you, it's a different way for me. I think even less about what I'm talking about. It's just, I just go astray because I've been talking that language for 36 years old. So then music, I've been playing since I was six. So I've been playing the piano for 30 years already. So then it's a process. It's a process that you never stop because you never stop learning. You never stop developing things and connecting with new things. Um, I hope that makes a little sense when it comes to improvising and what it takes also in, in order to improvise. That doesn't mean that you cannot improvise the first day. The first day you improvise because I'm sure you come with me to the piano right now and you improvise and you're going to create sounds. Then that you feel comfortable with the sounds that you play, then that takes time. Because you want to develop something that your ears are comfortable with. And that also is related to something else, which is like the way that you could feel. There are some people that they are a little more flexible and open. And maybe they play something like this at the beginning. And they say, wow, that's beautiful. I play the piano beautifully. Um, but usually maybe people get more connected with this, you know, at the beginning. Then later, for me, I connect with anything. You can do anything in the piano, and for me, it's something attractive. But at the beginning, usually, you know, you have to go through the book a little bit and learn the instrument, the, what the basis, and all of that. It takes time. It takes time, but definitely you can connect with emotionally or in any way with people, with, through music or through language or through anything, but you have to take, it takes some time, to be honest. It takes time. It's not something that you're going to do like this and maybe you're going to be comfortable. I hope I, I hope I answered the question. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, well, I would like to know that through the years, uh, as a musician, what do you think that it could be um, a challenge that from engineer you can make it easy or can save a lot of stress or something like that uh, through the tours, through the practices? How can an if... engineer make my no, life easier? Engineering in general, like what do you think as a musician could be something that could make your life as a musician easily? Like we were talking about like being an engineer in this program is to understand musicians and interaction with the audience and with the instrument. And through these years as a musician for you, what is a challenge that you think that engineering could help you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I know maybe the maybe, maybe that Maybe that's a question that I yeah, can- I, I was, can... <laughs> I was thinking like, but. <laughs> But you have some needs, like for as a musician, that maybe engineering can help you. you oh, know? I'm sure that we have many needs, but um, right now, thinking <laughs> like that is is a very tough question for me, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's fine. I I like to be in the spot that I don't know what to say. <laughs> that doesn't happen that much, but I believe. Um, I go with you know, obviously, technology is something important in our lives. It's something that really you know, like transform our lives in so many ways. And it has been so much developed in, in engineering and technology and everything uh, that makes our lives, I don't know if easier, but definitely changeable. So I'm looking forward. What I can tell you is that I'm very looking forward to new ways of, you know, expressing ourselves and new ways of learning and new things that I can incorporate into my music. For example, the piano is a very old instruments is something that comes from you know from the past and it you know it has been many ways right now that we can develop you guys as engineers that we can i mean like explore new things in our lives for me also to go back to this old instrument and then make it a little maybe more modern or create sounds that i didn't know that i could even create just because technology and that's something that attracts me a lot uh sometimes i even play um, some improvisation. The other day I was with an electronic musician. He is a DJ, very advanced in my opinion. 
from Los Angeles. And he was telling me that when I play the piano, some high notes for him feels that the computer sometimes, when, in, when the computer makes sounds for him. I was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. But, but, but that may be something that he knows that I don't know and I want to explore. So, you know, again, uh, there are many ways of, of, of learning and I'm just curious. Uh, but again, just to respond, uh, maybe to answer the question with a very theoretical way of something, I'm, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm a little lost. <laughs> maybe I can, uh, I should probably say that answering that question uh, is going to take about 50 hours of class. So we are already using two of our 50 hours of class in this course because this course is actually it's devoted, all is all about that. So it's good that you're asking the question as, at the very beginning because this is the question that we will be asking ourselves during the course. How can we help? And uh, uh, there are many ways this can happen. And uh, we will discover that as we go along with the course. But for example, to be more specific, maybe I can reformulate a tiny version of the same question. If you could know, for example, more about the audience that you have in front of you, yeah. what would you like to know? So before before you answer, yeah. be, before you answer, uh, imagine being... You mean the way maybe they're feeling? Yeah. Wow. Imagine being That's on a stage <laughs> and you have 10,000 people in front of you. You can only see those that are right in front of you. You can see their facial expression. You can read facial expressions because that's your, it's your job. You have to know what, how they react. You have to have a feedback on how they're but reacting you to your music. But you don't know what's happening to, the, to those that are behind. Maybe in front of you, you have just the groupies, the people that have been following you all their life and they go crazy about you and they will always be smiling at you, you know? But you don't know what the others are thinking. You, what would you like to know about them? Would you like to know how versed they are in understanding rhythm? Would you like to know how versed they are in understanding harmony? And maybe you can adjust what you're doing in order to please everybody. Not necessarily diluting, diluting your, your, your art, but maybe adapting on the fly to what's going on. So if you had a display that shows you something about them, what would you like to see? I mean, I see, I see right now, I see two possibilities. One is life that I'm playing live and then knowing what's happening in their minds and maybe that's going to influence me definitely and change in a way the way that I'm playing and the way that I'm thinking at the moment, playing live, I mean. And the other one is exploring not playing live, which means that um, knowing a concert but maybe knowing what people think about what I play right now, right here, all, all, all of these minds because I'm sure that there is a lot of diversity. Maybe there are people that are thinking, oh, he's good. Oh, he's not that good. Well, he thinks he are. So I, I, it would be nice, uh, not only about good or bad, but their really opinion. They really criticize what they really think that for them will make their lives a little easier, maybe with my music. Maybe they could say it's too complicated for me. It's too ad advanced. I don't understand. Uh, don't I don't get the odd rhythms. I don't get the, I, maybe they don't, they even don't know. emotionally, they don't know. They don't like it because they don't. Exactly, so exactly. That that. Exactly. That would, that would be amazing. That would be amazing to know something like that. And that would be amazing to explore with something like that while I am playing too. That would be amazing, you know, if we can do something like that. Definitely. Yes. So, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Let me know. I come here and we, put, and we experiment. <laughs> Any other question? Yeah, time. <laughs> <laughs> lunch time, lunch time. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this question is for Simone. Uh, actually, you told uh, told us before that as a musician and engineering, you have you had to have some balance. Had to have some balance. So what is your best suggestion? Because I'm a musician as well, but I, now I have to study as well. So what do you suggest us to don't forget and don't leave the instrument in a different he's way? A challenge for the course. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm still looking for the answer to this question. And I mean, uh, during the, the studying, it was between university and making music. 
now it's between making music and making the laundry and tidying up the room. So when and, you get and don't make your wife uh, upset with you. Yeah, then you have also Tell that to bring the girlfriend. It's the future you spend. <laughs> it's 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 that's always that's it's, it's part of the music. It's the inspiration probably. Yeah, yeah, it's, part of the music. Uh, it's it's really it's really hard. It's always a challenge to find the time. I think it is also. Um, um, meaning of priority. Somehow you have to set a priority. So I, I think you have to put something in the second place. You have probably... Um, what do you do? You schedule the, the week with... You take some time to rehearse with your band, some time to compose after the work? Well, I, I try to... Uh, for example, I'm uh, teaching in a school. And I al always try to have a balance between teaching and have a couple of hours for me. And this is like um, on, on the whole week. So, so I try not to have just time at the weekend, but to have some continuity during the week so that I'm not uh, making on off. It's just a part of my schedule. So maybe this is a... Maybe we can turn the same question to Fausto. To me? Guitar, Manu Manush guitar, yes. uh, musician, professional musician, and an engineer. Well, uh, it's it's the same. I it's it kind of priority, but then you you wake up with a schedule, uh, and it's a mess because you you receive uh, problems. <laughs> I, I got I get problems, uh, bureaucracy, and other stuff to do. Uh, so in the end, you. Uh, it's different the approach uh, that Alfredo, for sure, I'm, I'm sure uh, he, he can choose the time when he, he, he has the, the right mood to, to compose and to. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I, obviously I don't have, you know, like of course you, guys, you, you have like more you guys, time. I didn't, what I, the only thing that I did my whole life was just studying music. I didn't study something else like you guys deeply because obviously we try to inform ourselves with anything that is happening in the whole world because music doesn't come from music. At least that's the way that I see it. It comes from your experiences. And if your experiences well. are lack of a lot of different other things, then your music sounds like that. Uh, so I feel that as a human being, as much as you learn from anything, that is going to be good for whatever you are the best at. Uh, you know, whatever you spend more, the most time doing, which for me is the piano. But I definitely didn't go to university like you guys for engineering or something. So that moment, I spent it with the piano. I spent it playing the piano and learning music or whatever. And today, I have the honor to keep doing the same. I just go on tour. I play every day. I go back home and I record. I play music. It's, I'm involved with music the whole day. So I don't really have experience something that I really have to choose to study or to... But, but, but some, human, somehow it's the same because you have to stay at the airport today. Exactly. That, that so you don't have the whole time. That, I, that was what I was going to include now. That, uh, that at the end, as human beings, we spend so much time doing so many things. You yeah. know, all the things that are, as I said, not related to music, but in a way could be related to music. So we, 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 me, could, I, we could resume saying that in the end, we learn how to... Uh, how to enjoy the, 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 the few time we have during the day and to try to focus on that. So if we have, uh, of course, uh, two hours is good, but if we have just half an hour, uh, we focus on that. That's the priority for that half an hour. And also, also, I feel, I don't know how it would be for you guys as engineers, but for musicians, I feel that there are many ways that you can be practicing that it doesn't have to be with oh, the instrument. Yes, because yes. I practice more for six years. I've been pla practicing more without the piano than with the piano. Then when I'm with the piano, I just try whatever I had in mind before, but then I don't have the opportunity. Right now, I'm going to be on tour. I've been on tour since June 25, and I'm not home. So, And I'm going to end October 2nd right now uh, uh, in, in Europe. So I, I will be no piano. Well, now I have the piano. I was playing a little bit. That's the situation with me. I go to places. Yesterday, I play sound check, concert. The day before, sound check, concert. That's what I play the piano. 
the other part of the day, I play the piano. But here. But then you have your phone with your voice recordings. Yes, yes. and anything. And I don't. I am not playing physically the piano. But, but you keep the memory. Music is part of my life the whole okay. day. So you know, you know, your phone is in my in my bag. So I'm gonna steal your uh, voice recordings. <laughs> All the voice. <laughs> you're, not gonna, you're not gonna understand anything that I'm saying. <laughs> Again, you know, music is music is everywhere. You will see in six months a new album coming up with uh, Alfredo Rodriguez. For, said, yes. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so me mental training, maybe it's a really uh, important thing because sometimes you are uh, commuting, you are on the train, but you can work on music. And, and again, with technology, we have many programs that we can develop that thanks to you guys as well. Because there are many, before you had to have a chart. You don't need to have a chart anymore. You can write your music on your phone, not even on the computer, on your phone. You can write all the charts. You can write all the music. And then you can record as well. Only because technology. Because we didn't have those opportunities 60, 70, 80 years ago. So then, uh, today is easier. For me, in order to be connected to music, you can be listening to music a lot also from different places. You can be watching videos. You can be doing many things. And I'm, I'm talking only specific about music. Remember what I said before. For me, it doesn't only come from music. It comes from anything. It comes from a conversation right, right now. This conversation is influencing me right now, my personality, my way of thinking. It's changing my life in a way. Last night, you were playing uh, light poles. How do you call that? In the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, were uh, we were talking it through. We were talking. Yeah, we were uh, walking uh, in Bovisa. <laughs> Uh, so and Yarel was playing the light poles to to see, yeah, <laughs> to, see to see the notes, the, <laughs> the notes, notes and, and the and harmony that we were the... creating with all of those. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding, ding. So so we were creating like you know harmonies, melodies, yeah, intervals yeah, yeah, with all of those things. So that's a good example. That's your training. That's a good example of men. You know, it's like you become like a. It's a challenge, crazy people, crazy people for a lot of people that are not used to that kind of way of, of, of you know, like, you know, going into your life every day. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because we think too much about music. We start trying to, and we don't have the instrument with us all the time. We start trying to find music out of anything that we can yeah, find. Yeah. And then that's important. At the end, you are practicing in a way. You're practicing a lot. You know, maybe from those situations, ideas come even fresh, you know, in, in a fresh way. Because you are not doing the standard situation in order to compose, in order to learn. You have to find a way of creating music. You have to find a way to keep your brain practicing even though you are not with your instrument. Then that happened to some musicians like us. Because I have my other friends that is a trumpet player and he's jumping the whole day. You know, he has that ability. He can do that because he has the, the trumpet with him. He can use the mute. He can do anything. I, I have, you know, he, he even play at the hotels. He's making us crazy. The guy that he goes, because he goes like playing the trumpet on, on the, you know, the hotel room. And we are like, you know, he's, he can play the whole day. He can practice the whole day, the actual instrument. But we, it's, it's a little more difficult. Even with technology, now there are many ways also. Yes. It's like, even like invisible keyboards, like, yeah, many things that people have created that at least you can, but I, you know what? I remember that in my house. You know, this is a good example. When I started playing the piano, I didn't have a piano. My parents didn't have money to buy me a piano. So my three first years of the school, you know how was I, uh, the way that I was practicing? I painted the piano in our, in our table. So I was just playing a table. I didn't, it didn't have sound. It didn't have the toy. It didn't have anything. It was just like, and then, but that for me, in a way, was helpful. Because I, at least I, I had something. My mind was imagining. At least, you know, that's what, what you cannot really lose. Imagination, you know, the way. Are you perfect pitch? Do you I have perfect pitch? Yes. I would say yes. Okay. A lot of my friends just play with me. Just, hey, play this. Boom. And I go and, and I play it. But, but not, when it comes to the instrument, I, I would say yes. But when it comes to 
If you I mean, play so something, you, you recognize the pitch, uh, the, the frequency with piano yes. instrument, but not with other instruments or other. No instrument. The instrument, yes. Yes. But when it comes to sounds, sometimes I make mistakes. Okay. But because sometimes I, I have it. Because sometimes I go and I play the same song, but I, I have the same note. But I don't want to say I have perfect pitch when it comes to any sound that you throw right now. Like, I don't know. Maybe that one is a little tough. But, well, because it's not perfect. Uh, on yes, tune. yes, yes. I don't get that one. Yeah. But when it comes to, to instrument, yeah, I can, I can uh, repeat. Uh, did you discover that uh, when you were a child? When or? I was a child, yes. Yes. My, parent, my, my father was, that was his game. All the time in my and, house. And do you do you play with people, uh, n not with perfect pitch, but with relative pitch, that are great musicians as yes. well because they developed. Uh, yes, or or you don't. I mean, it's something that is helpful. Definitely, is helpful because of yeah. some. But sometimes not. It, it depends. It depends. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't make you a good musician. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. You sing in a choir. I mean, I, I want to I say something to this yeah. conversation that we're having right now. Everything in extreme, in my opinion, is not that good. Yeah. When I'm saying extreme, it's like some people come to you a little, you know, that they don't know that much, but they come to you, uh, oh, my gosh, I saw this guy with a big hand like this, and he's the best piano. And I'm like, why do you think, like, because someone has a big hand is, is the best piano, and someone has a, you know, like, like a, that doesn't make sense. Some people tend to think, like, big is better. <laughs> and which, don't think which, what which, you're thinking, hey guys. Hey. <laughs> no, but 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 it's true. It's 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 true. It's it's true that that you know, like there are certain situations that you don't really have to develop. That you know, uh, something like like that. You know, you don't need to think about something like that. I think the most important the 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 balance again is a word that I really use. And a lot, I use it because I think for me it's so important. There are possibilities in many things. It can be a guy with a big hand and he will have some possibilities better than you, that maybe you had a small hand, but maybe with the person that has a very small hand, he will have possibilities that the other person cannot do. For example, in the piano, it's very easy. You might do the octaves, you know, like you can do pa, pa, whatever. You have, you have like, or something like, like, like big, whatever. But then for you, it's difficult to do the small things. It's difficult for a big hand. It's difficult to do that right now that I did because the fingers are so big. How you put oh, the them? Yeah. So yeah. everything in life has his positive and negative. I think the best would be like a mid, like midterm balance is is the best. I think at least you can have you can play with all the possibilities. Maybe nothing extreme. Too much sugar is not that good. Too much salt is not that good. Is what I'm saying at the end. You know, it's the same with cooking. If you put like a chunk of salt, no one's gonna like it. If you put a chunk of sugar, it's gonna be the same. So you have to find the right balance. that balance, that middle, that. And also, we are talking about taste again, which is something infinite. So we can be talking, subjective. yes, subjective and infinite, and everyone has a different taste and all of that. So it's like a. You know, we are in a good, we are, I mean, music is so fascinating because I was talking to Michael actually yesterday when we coming from the train, that was our, our conversation. It was like, you know, uh, when you are like, for example, I love sports. So when you are like, in, in a certain way, it's very easy for someone to say, like, if you are, if you pass everyone playing the soccer and you score the goal, you are the best. Usually that's what people say. Or if you are a really good defender and you don't let anyone make the, you know, like put the goal inside, you are a good defender. That's it. The conversation ended right there. Right. It's not a possibility that you are the defender and all the guys are passing you and, and creating goals and you are the best defender. No, that doesn't exist. You are bad. You go to the bench. If you don't score the goal and you have the, the goal like this and you don't score and you miss, most probably, you're going to go to the bench again. In music, it's not like that. Art, in general, is subjective. You know, it's like your opinion. It's a paint, you know. It's like whatever. It's art. And art, in general, is very subjective. It's subjective. It's depending on what you think is best or not. And it's an endless conversation because who really has the truth? No one. You have your own truth, 
your own way of thinking, but but then there is it. an objective thing that the popular music is normally uh, what what the media uh, spread to us. Uh-huh. It's less complicated music oh, than uh, jazz music. That's or, definitely uh, true. That's definitely true, and that's something also that they do because they know it monetized easy. Yeah, yeah. And but, but once again, the balance. We were talking about uh, last night about promotion of festivals, of music festivals, no? Yes, yes. About pro lineups yes. in, in festivals. Yes. Uh, so it, the balance is in that in that case to bring uh, a, a well-known band, and then maybe bring another jazz band, and and in the end, the audience enjoy uh, both concerts yeah. and discover new music. Uh, that's uh, that's the aim, of course. For television, uh, you, uh, I mean, you are internationally well known, uh, but uh, maybe you play in small venues because, of course, you you don't do popular music. Yeah. But I I do prefer this. It's my it's my taste. Yeah, I, yeah, because yeah. And, and you too. You. Well, you, I mean, that's that's something else about music in a way. Well, now we're talking about different thing, which is like music industry, because we are in an industry. We are in a business, and sometimes we forget about that too. We forget that, that we are part of a business. When it comes to the business, it's true that we are maybe almost the last one, to be honest, because when it comes to music streams right now, when it comes to music live shows, when it comes to all of that, when we talk about jazz or we talk about classical music, unfortunately, we are kind of like the last one. And maybe we are the ones who spend the more time with our instrument, exploring, really trying to, you know, that, that we cannot, in a statistic says that we cannot really live without music. There are some people, maybe in the stream, uh, when I say stream is like the mainstream artists, that maybe they are very popular right now. They are the biggest artists, and you see that maybe in 10 years, they disappear. Boom. They don't play music. They are in a jet somewhere else, somewhere else. And you, as a musician, I, I feel about myself, I'm going to be, I'm going to die playing the piano. You know, I'm going to die. I need the piano yes. in order to survive. And there are people that they don't think in that way. So in a way, music business is, is very differ- different than, for example, when it comes to a, to a doctor, which means that, you know, a doctor has to do the surgery correct. If you do it wrong, you don't do it anymore. It's like a sport. In or... our world, it's not like that. In our world, it's more about monetizing. And that's it, unfortunately. Uh... And that's true. It's, it's a little sad, but at the, at the, at the same time, Man, I live my life. But happily. luckily, I have to, I have luckily to you, have a, you have a long career because you play jazz. Instead, uh, if you play pop, uh, if you're a pop singer, uh, maybe it's like a, yes. a model. Uh, yes. I know, uh, I, I, <laughs> 10 years and then yes, uh, it's off yes. because you choose no, a direction. And, and, and also, as I said before, you have to find something in life that makes you happy. I cannot, I cannot really transform my music and go to sleep thinking that I am like a sad person. And I would be sad if I go to monetizing my music in a way that is just as so, so, so simple that it sounds for me not good. For me, again, I say for me because I don't want to, you know, like judge other opinions. Everyone has is able to be free to have their own opinion, consume any music that they like. But for me, it has to have a little more. Not only when it comes to music, when it comes to anything, you know, it's not like I'm going to be eating bad food, like, like junk food every day. I don't go to McDonald's. I don't like to eat that food. People like it, go. I don't do it. I prefer to eat really good Italian food. You have like a tradition of really good food. What I'm, why I'm going to spend my money into something that doesn't really taste good for me. So it's the same with music. You have, you know, you have, you have to choose. You have to choose what is your priority, what's the way that you want to spend your life, uh, you know, and, and that's it. Well, it's, uh, I think I'm, uh, it would be wonderful to be able to continue this conversation. <laughs> and I'm sure we will have enough to cover the rest of our life we're just talking about these things. But unfortunately, the time is up. And actually, we, we went far beyond the, the allotted time. I know many of you have other classes. Thank you so uh, much for everyone that um, stayed. Thank a, you so much. Huge applause to our guests. It was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>